So uh, <laughs> Kathy is uh, really important to me because 15 years ago, we started our book publishing ministry, and uh, this was the second church that we did a book for. And, um, and Kathy uh, has an incredible story. And so Kathy, I would, would you mind just telling us a little bit about your story, whatever you're comfortable sharing? Um, it's pretty dramatic. Do you mind if I tell them the, the I'm not gonna Go tell them the secret. I'm, you, you tell them, you say it, because it's, 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 it's powerful. And I was like, whoa, this was one of the confirmations to me that we had something. Because you just can't imagine who's sitting in this church. You know, so so give us a thumbnail sketch of your story, not the twenty minute version, but the five minute version. Of my testimony yeah. and how I came to Christ. Yeah. Well, um, I wasn't always a believer. I was baptized when or sprinkled, I should say, in the Lutheran church when I was a teeny tiny baby. But um, I kind of went astray during my life. I got into uh, stripping. I'm sure you heard the go at the stripper story. <laughs> <laughs> they actually have it, yeah. Probably have it. They have it? Oh, no, I, I, I don't believe they have. So that's okay, part of sorry. But anyways, um, so anyways, um, I stripped for probably 13 years of my life. Um, running. You made quite a bit of money doing that? Lots of money, yeah. Uh -huh. So it's very addictive. Uh -huh. The money, you know, it doesn't last long, but very addictive. and very... as fast as you get it, probably. Oh, yeah. You know, on dumb stuff. So yeah. anyways, um I did that for 13 years of my life, and then I'd gotten into a little bit of a pickle with a car accident and ended up in prison. Wow. So what happened, you were at a bar with these guys, right? Uh-huh. And uh, you were the most sober of the three, right? For a while, until I was drugged. Oh, you got drugged. Okay. Rupee. Oh, okay. Rupee. Yeah. Anyways, um, so we ended up getting a, a wreck. And um, one of them died, um, and I end up in prison because it was my vehicle and uh, my lifestyle seemed more expendable, I guess. And anyways, so I end up in prison, unsaved. Um, but there is where he got me, and I remember the first time when I went into the county jail, and I met this lady and she says to me she says uh what do you do with your most precious jewels and i'm like well i put them away i put them in a box in my jewelry box she says well that's what god's done to you <laughs> and so that was a different perspective huh yeah you probably so weren't like, exactly feeling like a jewel at that moment no you were feeling <laughs> discarded yeah, so I was like, okay, and anyways, I get radically saved. Jesus comes and visits me and loves me and pulls me through, literally takes my hand and pulls me up and gives me strength in this terrible situation. Um, and I just fell in love with him and his grace and his mercy on my life at that point. Wow. So that's awesome. So, uh, how long ago was that that you came to know Jesus? That was, I, I, I was saved on 9-11. Really? Yes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> there was, was another explosion that yes. day. Oh, yes. Yeah. I was literally saved when, um, you know, I saw, all we saw was the, the, explosion of the twin towers and everything and, and at that time i'd been kind of dabbling in church and everything and um when that happened i had two young children out here in the world and i was like oh my gosh what am i gonna do yeah right. and I, I was and literally outside. yes i was literally looking for places i could crawl under the fence and escape yeah, yeah. which is 15 years yeah <laughs> yeah right no questions asked 15 more years and yeah. you know that's if they don't win you or something with a gun yeah, but yeah. so it was pretty tragic pretty traumatic um and that's when he just saved me he wow. just literally picked me up and saved me yeah while yeah. i was on my knees yeah. scrubbing yeah. the main street of plain street jail with a toothbrush on my knees, I start singing Amazing Grace out of nowhere, and wow. he just, the love of God just flooded around me and wow. saved me. Wow. 
And I'll just tell you, <laughs> I've known you now for probably at least 15 years. Because because uh, that was before we started GCP. Uh, I met you before that, I think. And uh, But I really got to know you when we did this book. Mm -hmm. And she's a real life believer for all these years. <laughs> and uh, a precious, precious gal. So, so then, tell me about the day when <laughs> you came up to me when we were here at church. And you remember that? Yes. Well, we had done the book. And my story of how I came to Christ and everything was in the book um, about the the uh, parole counselor and everything. I, I got the book. We, we, we gave my story, you know, about how God saved me while I was locked up in prison and literally, you know, set me on fire for Jesus. And um, anyway, so here I'm, you know, ex-offender. And um, Darren had wrote this book and everything. Um, my testimony was in it and a couple other of my friends were in it. And I um, just had this burning inside me to touch the prisoners and God just put it in my spirit that we were to evangelize the prison system right. with these books and I remember coming up to you yeah. <laughs> and you looking at me like I was totally crazy. <laughs> did I really? You I'm did. Like... <laughs> well, honestly, here's, here's where I was at. She comes up to me and she goes, we need to get one of these books in every prison in the state of Texas, and I'm going, I have no idea how to do that. I mean, it was just like, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't even begin to think of how to do that. There's a lot of prisons in Texas. And I remember you, yeah, there's a lot of prisons in Texas. I, I couldn't have gotten them into one prison that I knew how to do. So, <laughs> so you know, I, I thought, great idea. Tell me when you figure it out, you know, essentially. So, so. Yeah, so he basically shot me down. And... <laughs> <laughs> Might have. So I said, well, you know, I know this is from God. Yeah. I know this is God put this yeah. in my spirit. I didn't dream this up. Yeah. So I got some goats, you know, I had these goats. How many goats did you buy? I had three goats. Three goats. <laughs> I had three goats, yes. Carmen, Esther, and Munchie. <laughs> <laughs> Esther was the queen. Anyways, um, I had these three goats and I'd been milking them and I could get $10 for a gallon of goat milk. So I could buy two books with one gallon of goat milk. So we took some goat milk money and we took some truck money from Ono's truck building and we ordered our first order of books. And I think, I don't, I'm not sure how much we bought at the first, I think it was like $1,200 or $2,000, something like that. I think that. it was like $2,000. Something like that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so we got a bunch of books Yeah. and I just started off by sending three books to each prison. So each time we'd buy books, we'd send three to each prison. And all the prisons, uh, the chaplains accepted the books. They wanted the books. And only one did not want the books Never. out of 118 chaplains. Wow. And so wow. we started doing that. And now, chaplains don't have a lot of money like in their budget to like buy stuff. Do no, they? but you got to give them everything. Yeah, yeah. You do. Right, right, which is totally fine as far as I'm concerned. But... That made these books kind of valuable to them, probably. Oh, very valuable. And they love the books because these books, you know, you can hand them to an, to an offender that doesn't believe in God yeah. or doesn't know Jesus. Yeah. And they read this book yeah. and they want to know who Jesus is. <laughs> and it's like sneaky Jesus. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. is. It's like sneaky Jesus because they read and they get all involved in the story. Right. And then they're like... Oh, wow, who is this Jesus? Can yeah, he do that yeah, for me, too? Yeah, yeah. And so anyway, when I'd send the books, I'd always put in a little insert for my ministry and uh, tell them they were welcome to write into the ministry and, and you know, just ask for prayer and all that. So I'd get on my little computer and I'd, you know, answer, you know, questions about the Lord. And that built my relationship with God because I was constantly researching yeah, and yeah. digging into the Word of God yeah, to... Yeah help these guys right. and these girls answer these questions right. about God. Yeah. And that's how we all started. Wow. Wow. And that's how the book ministry started. And and we've shipped tens of thousands of books in these prisons. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's pretty amazing. Yes. So she comes up to me and, and <laughs> we're visiting one time when I was speaking here at this church. And uh, I think I was the one who said, I think I'm going to put a button on my website. I don't think you asked for that. You were just saying, hey, how can we do this? 
better. We were looking for a way, yeah. just ideas. You know, I mean, three goats is a great start, but... <laughs> yeah, we needed more. <laughs> yeah, so we had a lot of prisoners that could use these books. And uh, so I was going to put a button on my website, basically a donation button, and then people could donate to it. And uh, um, and she called me up. She goes, hey, Darren, did you get that button on your website? And I happened to be driving down the road to a church in Southern Oregon to do a meeting. And... I feel terrible. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. I did not get that button up and, you know, failure. Whoops. And uh, <laughs> I'm driving down the road and it just, I had the time to think, I think is what it was. You know, I'm driving down the road and I'm praying and I'm thinking. And I went to a church and uh, I shared about books behind bars. And I don't think we even had a name for it yet. And, uh, um, and people responded and it was really beautiful. And we, started shipping a lot of books mm -hmm. and uh i remember you calling me yeah you were crying yeah. <laughs> you said oh my god the holy ghost just came all over me yeah we need to do this yeah and uh <laughs> um and since then you've gotten a lot of letters haven't you lots of letters a lot of guys you know saying please you know can you send my friend a book or please can you send my wife a book she's at home and i'm yeah. locked up here and yeah. could you just send her one of your books to encourage her yeah. and just help her you know because the books are just filled with so many different stories that you know so many different people can relate to so many things god's done in these books amen. they just touch so many people amen Amen. It's amazing. I mean, the cha the the stories I've heard from chaplains and the chappies, the chaplain helpers, and everything, where Muslims are turning to Christ because wow. they read the book, wow. or somebody that's fixing to hang themselves in 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 their cell or something, yeah. read a story in the book, and then the book just gives them that that God encouragement, that thing that just hits them down deep in their spirit, yeah. that says, "No, don't do that, because I love you." awesome things yeah well Kathy I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, what a blessing you are to me and the kingdom and that vision that God gave you and she's been faithful for years now to get books into prison and uh, champion this cause and work all the relationships with the chaplains and uh, we're so blessed to know you and to be your friend and we're praying and I, I hope you'll pray about joining with us to get thousands of books in these prisons it is the best fishing ground in the universe and uh, I mean these guys are and gals are lost they're alone they're rejected and when somebody can give them a beautiful book mm -hmm. and sit down and they can just feel loved oh yes and right. experience the story of Jesus mm -hmm. they can Amen. And they do feel love. They feel the love of God through these books, and they share these books. And it doesn't just stop with one inmate. We figured out that these books go around 500 hours of ministry. And That's you can reach all these people with just $9. Isn't that crazy? 500 ministry hours yeah. are only $9. These books just get read and read, and they literally get read until they fall apart. They do. I've had testimony where, oh, I found this book and it's all tattered and torn sitting on a bathroom wall and I picked it up and thank you Jesus I did because it saved my life yeah yeah we've got those kind of stories <laughs> we do so I don't know if you've heard this one but uh, one time we were uh, I was just visiting with a pastor in Baker City and one of the books had gotten into the Walla Walla Penitentiary and they'd been in lockdown for three weeks and this guy's sitting in his cell and he's just bored to tears he's read everything in his cell 50,000 times you know and this guard's walking by and he goes can you get me something to read and the guard goes bro I'm sorry I can't help you with that and then the guard softens up I guess and goes to the next cell and he goes hey you got anything your neighbor could read the guy hands him one of our books no cover on it shredded you know he takes the book he sits down and he starts crying he starts reading the book and he starts crying he said I cried through the whole book mm -hmm. and prayed the prayer at the end gave my heart to Jesus and I've been born again that's awesome. <laughs> you know, That's so awesome. But I know you know many, many, many That's more stories awesome. than that. But it's just fun what Jesus has done. Kathy, thank you so much for visiting with us. And I just wanted you guys to meet the lady <laughs> that this all started with. And your your precious treasure in the kingdom. And she's been living for Jesus for a long time now. And I think she's going full speed ahead. Where else so, will we go? Amen. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Kathy. You're welcome. And thank you for letting me be a part of this and blessing me. And 
I just want to know what's next. Me too. <laughs> Amen. Well, How are we going to crank this up a notch? Amen.